Dr. Ivan Van Setima, a prominent Guyanese historian, anthropologist, and scholar, is best known for his work on African history and his theories about pre columbia trans oceanic contact between Africa and the Americas. His views on human race were primarily focused on challenging Eurocentric historical narratives and alighting the contribution of African civilization to global history. In Africa, that pink African is the beginning of the European. Mm -hmm. Now, the pink African also started to undergo certain changes like ice produces a narrow nose. The parts of Africa you have Africans with narrow noses too because dry heat produces the narrow nose. So that man is one. There are no races really. You have uh, you have the African as the beginning of the human race, but the other others are mutations. They're not races in the true sense of the word. Race is a social concept that was to come later. And after the slave trade, when Europe conquered Africa, etc., then blackness and color became associated with being in a low position. So that. They, therefore, colors and races became associated with certain things. Those are things that are going to pass as we recover our history and transform ourselves. But initially, you have the pink African who becomes the European. He undergoes certain changes over a period of time. For example, in the ice, it's important to have long hair to protect the neck from cold. In heat, it's important that you have short hair follicles so that heat can escape. These things have nothing to do with inferiority or superiority. They have to do with environmental, yes, needs. environmental mm -hmm. necessity, the mm -hmm. environmental imperatives. So that you would find in Africa, some people have narrow noses where there's dry heat. Some people have thinner lips. Some people have fuller lips. Some people have close cropped hair. Some people have wavy hair, etc. This has nothing to do with inferiority or superiority. It doesn't even have anything to do with beauty. Mm -hmm. Because the first great Europeans who, who met the first great Africans, the Greeks, when they went to Egypt and they met the blacks, they thought black was beautiful. It was quite op the opposite because the first whites were so startled by black achievement in Egypt that and so many whites came to study in Africa, in Egypt, that they associated um, great intelligence and great beauty with blackness. They actually began to take black gods because the first, for example, Europeans started to worship Isis, a black goddess. They started to have temples to Isis. Eventually, later on, Horus, who is the son of Isis and the son of Osiris, the male and female aspects of God, Europe initially um, worshipped the black Christ. So that this kind of racism that later occurred after the slave trade, this assumption about blackness associated with inferiority, that's a later thing in history. Mm -hmm. And you see, we are overwhelmed at the moment by that period so that we have forgotten what really happened in the history of the world. So the first human beings on earth, when do, when do they appear? They appear, we have found a man just last year we found an African taking a walk with his child four million years ago. Okay, now this we is... We found this complete skull. We found the whole skull. Okay. There's absolutely no question. He's not as developed as we are today. Okay, that okay. would be hominid. Yes, he, he uh -huh. is the first hominid. Uh -huh. But modern man, man with our brain, occurs about 140 to 150,000 years ago in Africa. Mm -hmm. We have been able to trace it, we have traced it through the blood that the, the mother of mankind, and this is not Lucy because we found a, a creature we call Lucy three and a half million years ago, an African too, but the, the first mother of mankind, a black mm -hmm. woman, is about 140,000 years old. We've been able to trace it through the genetic structure, we've been able to, find, to establish clearly that the first human, true modern human with our brain case, etc., mm -hmm. is an African woman about 140,000 years old. She has all the genetics, all the genes rather, of the human race. Then you have the African fanning out. The African goes up into Europe, the transformation occurs about pink skin and then the ice would produce the long hair, you know, retention of long hair or the long hair follicles, etc. Some people in the ice remain black. 
for example, the Eskimos, many of the Eskimos remained black because they had another way of dealing with the problem. Instead of having um, pink skin where melanin um, is not active, mm -hmm. enabling the sun rays to come through, the tangential sun to come through and feed, vitalize the body, the Eskimos had fish oils. They had seals and things like that. So it was necessary for skin change. Mm -hmm. What okay. is the fish oil? What does it have to do with anything? The what? The fish oil. What, okay, that, that, that would provide the vitamin D that was necessary to vitalize the bones. Oh, okay. You see, that vitamin D was coming from the sun. Therefore, if you have very black skin and that in that ice age it's not it's easy in temperate zones anybody could exist in this zone we're not talking about temperate zones we're talking about real ice mm -hmm. there were parts of europe where ice was half a mile thick okay so that it became um an advantage to have the the the, the in, uh, inactive m melanin so that mm -hmm. the tangential sunlight the slanted sunlight which is less than african sunlight could penetrate the skin mm -hmm. okay so that these are things that have to do with environment. They have nothing mm -hmm. to do with superiority or inferiority. And so, so for approximately how many years uh, was the world populated exclusively and only by Africans, black well, Africans? Okay, black skin. If you're Africans. talking about the modern Af the Homo last sapiens, African, sapiens. okay, uh -huh. because you see, the African is not only the first hominid; he's also the first human. Mm -hmm. Okay, the hominid is not completely human like us, but then comes the first human with our brain case. That's also African. And this begins to change about 55,000 years ago in Europe, where you get Africoid types becoming Caucasoid types, where you have what is called as Cro-Magnon man. This mm -hmm. is the, the, what we crudely call today white man. Mm -hmm. As against what we cruelly call today black man, okay, they're really just human beings, okay, but they undergo uh, superficial changes, skin changes, etc. And later on, you would have other changes like the narrow nose in ice versus the broader nose in heat, but you'd have the narrow nose also in dry heat, so that you would have superficial changes in the face of man related nothing to his intelligence, his brain or anything, related to the environment, mm -hmm. the, the amount of sun, the, 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 the kind of food you eat in, in particular environments, the kind of qualities of heat, qualities of cold, mm -hmm. etc. So this first baby, put it on that level, this first child probably would have had kinky hair. Oh yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes. because um, that was necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the climate in which it evolved, that was necessary. Curled or kinky hair, that would be necessary. Okay, and um, black skin would also be necessary. Mm -hmm. Because um, the albino, as I say, like the, um, not the stabilized pink, which mm -hmm. came later, but the albino in my country dies by the time you're 30, because the, 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 the sun would ravage you, mm -hmm. okay? Even just just be yeah. briefly, if you would, just explain what melanin does. If you, if you okay, melanin is a protect protects the body in a certain way. Um, it's the pigment that gives yes, us our color. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it's the pigment that gives you black or brown color, but it also protects you to some extent from the sun's rays. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. like for example, uh, in parts of South Africa, in parts of Australia, etc., we find lots of pink people have cancer. Mm -hmm. skin cancer okay so that um, if you were living in a, a tropical climate especially if it's an extreme tropical climate it, it is very advantageous to have black or dark brown skin mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. what we've also found is that we have misunderstandings about mm -hmm. body shapes and face shapes etc the African has six faces mm -hmm. they don't all look alike we they, may all be, they may all be black or brown, but they have all sorts of faces. Like, for example, you have the Somali. People saw, thought that these were mixed people. These are pure-blooded Africans, no mixture. They're in a different zone. They thought they were mixed because... Yeah, because they may have a narrow nose, for example. Mm -hmm. Many Africans have narrow noses because it, they're in dry heat. 
okay so that people made all sorts of stupid mistakes it's only now we begin to realize you have you have ranges of african you have ranges of of other types but the african has more ranges than any other people Van Settema advocated for an Afrocentric perspective on history, emphasizing the importance of viewing African cultures and civilization as significant contributors to world history. He believed that African history and achievement had been systematically undervalued or ignored in mainstream historical narratives. One of his most controversial and influential work is The Came Before Columbus, published in 1976. In this book, Van Settema argued that Africans had made contact with the Americas long before Christopher Columbus' arrival in 1492. He presented evidence such as similarities in art, cultural practices, and biological traits to support his claim of pre columbia African influence in the New World. Van Settema was critical of the Eurocentric bias in historical scholarship, which often marginalized or dismissed the achievements of non-European civilizations. He sought to rectify this imbalance by bringing attention to the advanced civilizations of Africa, such as ancient Egypt and the empires of West Africa, and their impact on global development. He highlighted the contributions of African civilization to various fields, including science, architecture, and navigation. Van Settema argued that acknowledging these contributions was essential for a more accurate and inclusive understanding of human history. Van Settema's work also addressed issues of racial identity and pride by uncovering and celebrating the achievements of African ancestors. He aimed to inspire a sense of pride and dignity among people of African descent. He believed that a more truthful representation of history could combat racism and foster a greater appreciation for cultural diversity. While Van Settema's theories, especially about the African present in pre columbia America, have been influential, they have also been met with criticism from some scholars who argue that his evidence is not conclusive or that his interpretations are speculative. Despite this, his work has had a significant impact on the field of African studies, anthropology, and history, encouraging further research and dialogue about the contributions of African civilization toward history. Dr. Ivan Van Settema's views on human race centers on promoting a more inclusive and accurate portrayal of history highlighting the significant contributions of African civilizations and challenging Eurocentric narratives that have long dominated historical scholarship. His work aimed to foster a greater understanding and appreciation of the rich and diverse history of humanity. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share your thoughts in the comment box below. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.